I've previously done a video on the fates of the Teen Titans in the Injustice Universe, but since then there's been quite a few changes in the Injustice Universe. Where last we saw the Titans, many were dead, and the rest were trapped in the Phantom Zone. And for more details on this, check the links in this video's description. The Teen Titans were trapped very soon after Superman killed the Joker, and have been in the Phantom Zone ever since. And now, six years later, the Teen Titans return to the Injustice Universe. Now it is a bit odd that Batman, the world's greatest detective, has had no idea whatsoever where Tim Drake, his once sidekick, has been all this time, and that he's never really seemed to look into it. But ignoring that rather large plot hole, Batman is now on the case. While Catwoman was working with Superman's regime, she overheard where the Teen Titans were, which I'm assuming is her way of saying that she hacked into Superman's computers and accessed the information as I sincerely doubt that Superman was just having a casual conversation about how he punched his friend Superboy so hard that a rib pierced his heart, and then that he imprisoned him and his friends in the Phantom Zone. I mean, how would that conversation even come about, let alone be an earshot of Catwoman? But, armed with this information, Batman assembles his allies, namely Green Arrow, Black Canary, Steel, Catwoman, Harley Quinn, Plastic Man, and Plastic Man's son and they all teleport to Superman's Fortress of Solitude to access the Phantom Zone projector that is stored there. Plastic Man and his son pick the lock to the fortress, but the team is then attacked by Eradicators, which are Kryptonian androids with similar powers to Superman. They are also vastly more powerful than Batman's team are. Just before the team is killed by the androids, they are deactivated by Superman's father, or at least his human father, Pa Kent. It turns out that the Kents have been living in the fortress, as the rest of the world hates them now, and there is nowhere else for them to live since their farm was burnt down. Now it is understandable since their son went nuts and took over the world in a dictatorial rule, but still it's not really their fault, they had no way of knowing who would grow up to be. The Kents refused to let Harley Quinn in the fortress, due to her part in turning Superman evil by killing his wife, unborn child and several million others, which is quite understandable. But after the rest of the group has joined them for tea and explained why they are there, they access the Phantom Zone projector and open a portal. Their plan is pretty simple. The Phantom Zone is a strange and confusing place that is hard to travel, so Plastic Man is going to keep an arm in the real world, then use his stretching powers to go into the Phantom Zone and look for the Teen Titans. And after a long search and asking a supervillain for directions, he finds them. They are very glad to see him and obviously want to leave, but they explain that Superboy will die if they leave the Phantom Zone. But Superboy insists that the others go, and though they comply, they are determined to find a way to rescue him as well once they're back in their own universe. The group leave and meet Batman and his team, Robin of course being overjoyed that Batman is finally rescuing him, as he never once gave up hope that Batman would find him. The two have a tearful hello, and Tim asks if the world even needs a Batman and Robin team anymore and Batman says that he thinks that's exactly what the world needs. And it's actually a very touching moment. Maybe it's because Batman is always so angry and serious, but when he has these moments, it always seems good to see the Bat family together. And it's because of how beautiful this moment is that it's even more painful to watch Tim Drake die in Batman's arms. Because General Zod has managed to follow them through the portal and out of the Phantom Zone, and he has used his heat vision to fry straight through Robin's chest, which is horrible to watch to be honest, as I really wish Tim Drake had stayed alive and in the Injustice Universe. Batman is of course devastated by this, but the others have to deal with General Zod. Starfire and Wonder Girl are powerhouses, but they are no match for a full-blooded Kryptonian. Harley Quinn and the Eradicators hear the commotion and come to help, but Zod is easily able to take care of the androids as well. Thankfully, Green Arrow has a Kryptonite arrow on him, and he manages to shoot Zod in the shoulder and wound him. Now, Green Arrow probably would have been killed by Zod at this point, but he reaches for another Kryptonite Arrow, and Zod decides to flee rather than risk a confrontation. Though Green Arrow was actually bluffing, and it was lucky that Zod left when he did, as they had no more Kryptonite left. The team regroup, and Batman orders them all to stay inside, as he doesn't want them to get in the way, as he has no intention of holding back against Zod. Batman calls in his bat armor that he is clearly built to fight Superman. He then blasts Zod with the kryptonite fear gas that Joker and Scarecrow made, and then punches the hell out of Zod as Zod hallucinates. Meanwhile, around the world, Ra's al Ghul is in Gorilla City, and the Gorillas have detected Zod's presence in the North Pole. 
Raish informs Solovar, the king of Gorilla City, that they must deal with him, as General Zob will not be an ally, but instead will try to conquer the world and kill them as well. And so they send their Amazo android there to defeat Zod. Back with the fight, the gas is starting to wear off and Zod is ready to face Batman, when the Amazo android lands and for some reason Zod thinks it's there to help him, but quickly learns otherwise as the Amazo android tears his head clean off and then flies off with it, leaving his headless corpse in the snow. It's a fight that lasts all of 3 seconds, and in that it's actually quite brutal because what can kill a Kryptonian in 3 seconds? Now, although Zod being there was terrible, as he killed Tim Drake, it does provide the team with a rather unique opportunity. As I said, Superboy cannot leave the Phantom Zone, as his heart was ruptured by Superman, and they can't replace the heart as he isn't human. He is half human, half Kryptonian, and he needs a stronger heart than a human has to support his system. But the team now has a spare Kryptonian heart, thanks to the corpse of General Zod. So Batman goes to collect Dr. Midnight, who is the greatest surgeon Batman knows of in the world. And so they go back to the Fortress of Solitude. The others have prepared Zod's heart for transplant and converted Green Arrow's Kryptonite Arrow into a Kryptonite Scalpel so that the transport can be performed. Of course, a heart transplant needs other medical tools to cut and drill through the ribs as well, but presumably they have coated these tools in Kryptonite as well. Harley Quinn is of course a trained psychiatrist and as such has some knowledge of surgery as it was part of her medical training. And she also helped the Joker perform heart surgery on Lois Lane. And so she is the one assisting Dr. Midnight. The others go to get Superboy from the Phantom Zone and the moment he steps out of the portal he collapses and is placed on a gurney. The other Titans are there and Superboy asks where Tim is. And before the others can tell him what has happened to Tim Drake, Batman tells him that he's running an errand for him which may seem messed up, and it kind of is, but Batman needed him to remain strong for his heart transplant, and telling him that his best friend is dead isn't exactly going to help Superboy keep his hopes up. And it does work, the transplant is a success, and Superboy is reunited with his adopted parents, the Kents. And though Tim Drake has died, Superboy, Starfire and Wonder Girl are alive, and they decide to join Batman's team. I'm glad that the Teen Titans have finally come into the Injustice comics properly, they did feature in one annual of the Year 3 of Injustice comics, but it was only the one story telling what happened to them, and they've been gone ever since. So I'm glad they're back in the story, though I really do wish Tim Drake hadn't died, as I really would have loved him to have joined Batman and be back in the Bat family properly, because Batman really has lost all of his Robins at this point, and it would have been good for him to get one back. But apart from that, it is good to see Superboy and Wonder Girl back in the fray though I do wonder how long they're going to last for, as it does seem unlikely that they're going to survive until we reach the Injustice 2 video game timeline. But we'll have to wait and see. Though since Starfire is in the DLC in the Injustice 2 game, well, she has to survive. Unless, of course, the writer is completely giving up on any continuity between the video games and the comic book series. But what do you think of this turn of events? Are you glad that the Teen Titans are back in the Injustice comics? And how do you feel about Tim Drake's death? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.